Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontra la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Hello fellow travelers and welcome to this episode of the Port Cabert Travel Show. I'm your host, Barry Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination. Maybe it's even yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you're listening to is performed by Alberto Perez, and Alberto is the owner of the Lapa Lapa group of restaurants. Those are the Lapa Lapa, Puerto Vallarta's oldest restaurant on the famous Los Muertos Beach and the El Dorado Restaurant and Beach Club right next door. So you can enjoy that fantastic view of the Los Muertos Pier, all lit up at night in beautiful colors, or during the day in its grand splendor for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, seated with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It's so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. This week I'm going to introduce you to my friend Eddie Rodriguez, And Eddie's got a great story. He's going to tell us about how he opened a school to teach English to children in Puerto Vallarta to give them a better life. The school is called the American English Tree, and his program is pretty cool. Actually, it's fantastic. You can can get involved as well. So stay tuned. You're going to find out all about Eddie and all about the American English Tree. But before we get to that, let's see what's happening in Puerto Vallarta this week, the 29th of June. 2021. Tropical storms and hurricanes are all over the place. It's, it is hurricane season. And uh, hurricanes are named in alphabetical order, uh, also in gender as well. We just had, let's see here, uh, A, B, C, D, E, the fifth, the fifth uh, hurricane or tropical storm of the hurricane season. Uh, last week we had Dolores, that starts with a D. So this week we get E, and that was Enrique. And Enrique caused quite a scare over the last couple of days in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, Enrique reached sustained winds of about 60 miles an hour, but never made landfall. Uh, instead, it caused tidal surges in Puerto Vallarta and all along the bay. Very little rain and very little wind. Uh, There was flooding. There was damage that occurred south uh, in Colima. And there were violent waves that caused, uh, well, two people to lose their lives in Acapulco, Guerrero. uh, Destroyed hundreds of houses in Guerrero. And uh, the storm has also caused damage in Michoacan. But for the most part, uh, in Puerto Vallarta, it was just high waves. It was the tidal surge. And uh, that was about it. Uh, whenever there are tidal surges, we always worry about places that are our favorite oceanfront restaurants, you know, like Cuates y Cuetes, uh, places like La Palapa and El Dorado and all those great little restaurants that are on the beaches. Uh, we worry about the Ramadas up in Boca de Tomates, and we worry about Nan over at Turtle Camp. And uh, I reached out to Nan to see how they were doing up over at Campamiento Tortuga Boca de Tomates, which is, uh, you know, saving sea turtles in Puerto Vallarta. And um, let me just read from their Facebook page. She does give an update here. Uh, Enrique has passed by our bay. The sea is churning, and thankfully the sea sand wall is so far holding well. Camp residents are experiencing some water intake in unfavorable but warrior conditions. Uh, Eyes always on the water should safe passage on foot become necessary. There will be no release opportunities until safe passage is ready for public once again. And beaches open for the tidal surge. 
Camp crew will remain and hatchlings attended. Please heed all safety warnings as there is nothing like the power of the sea. We have over 95 nests available for adoption. Should you consider a contribution to the little camp by the bay? And uh, Nan has a link to her PayPal account there. And I do too. They are in the show notes. Uh, I uh, talked with Nan this morning. Everything is fine. Uh, They are going to have to do, you know, a little bit of rebuilding of some things. But all the turtles are safe. All the nests are safe. And uh, everything is really cool. By the way, there are turtle releases happening every day, even this time of year. And we often forget that Nan is up there. And the sunsets from there are incredible and you should try to remember to get up there over at the uh, at the little camp the little turtle camp up there in Boca de Tomates uh, absolutely stunning and the experience of course is memorable it will touch your heart it really will you need to check out their Facebook page make sure that uh, they're releasing the evening that you go out but according to Nan they they're doing it they went all all the way through all the way through the season so very very cool Anyway, with uh, with the hurricane comes rain. Uh, there wasn't a lot of rain, but according to Angela, there's totals that uh, so far have changed since the last time we talked last week. Uh, the uh, month of June, so far year-to-date, is 11 inches of rain, so total of 12.46 inches for the year. Uh, last year to date, we had 4.35 inches for June, and uh, the total for the uh, the whole uh, year to date was uh, 13.28 inches. So we're catching up. We're catching up with last year. Uh, still got some way to go to fill the rivers and the aquifers and the water tables. Uh, but hey, the mountains are greener. And uh, thank you, Angela. Thanks for the weather report. I've got some interesting... Cruise news here. Uh, Looks like things are heating up in the United States Congress uh, to change some rules and some laws that happen to be hampering the United States uh, cruise industry. And this involves uh, Canada. And uh, this is from uh, cruiseradio.net. It reads, a new bill will allow U.S. cruise ships to permanently bypass Canada. Canada's cautious approach to cruising during the pandemic could have lasting negative effects on an industry worth an estimated $4.2 billion a year. Early last year, our northern neighbor banned large cruise ships from its ports uh, through February 28th, 2022. Yeah, we read about that. Uh, The wording left some wiggle room with the government stating should the COVID-19 pandemic sufficiently improved To allow the resumption of these activities, the Minister of Transport has the ability to rescind the interim orders. But despite the fact that COVID-19 case counts and hospitalizations have significantly improved and Canada has now first dose vaccinated nearly 75% of its adult population, there is no sign of the order being lifted. A shortened 2021 Alaska cruise season from Seattle is in the works thanks to the temporary waiver of a U.S. law that forces foreign flag ships, almost all large cruise ships that are in this category, to stop in a foreign port when traveling between U.S. ports. Some say the 135-year-old legislation is the only reason British Columbia's cruise industry exists in the first place, and what has allowed it to grow to the point where the Port of Vancouver welcomed more than 1 million cruise visitors in 2019 in Victoria, close to 800,000. Now, U.S. Senator Mike Lee from the landlocked state of Utah has introduced a bill that, among other things, would permanently repeal the Passenger Vessel Services Act and end the Canadian stopover requirement. The PVSA is not an America first, he said uh, in a Senate speech last month. This is the encapsulation of special interests first, or even you might say Canada first. The only reason why Canada wields this tremendous authority over us is because of our own law. 
Will ships still stop in Canada if they don't have to? That's a good question. For the estimated 29,000 Canadians dependent on the cruise industry, and for the cruise lovers who enjoy the ports of call of Vancouver and Victoria, the wild card is whether cruise ships will continue to stop there if they don't have to. British Columbia Premier John Horrigan says that he believes they will. Uh, I'm confident Canada has a good handle on this. The relationship between U.S. President Joe Biden and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is a solid one, Horgan said. We have good relationships to the South in Washington, Oregon, and California, and now emerging relationships with Alaska, Horgan added. I know the cruise ship sector very much values Victoria, Vancouver, and Prince Rupert as destinations for travelers around the world. Horgan notes that cruise ships traveling from Seattle to Alaska have to have to pass by BC. Why in the world wouldn't they want to stop, he said to reporters recently. That is part of the attraction. That's what makes cruising an important part of tourism internationally. Politicians make a fair point. Vancouver is a dynamic, thriving city in a stunning natural setting. Passengers can step off a ship at Canada Palace and be right in the center of the city's diverse action. Victoria on Vancouver Island is also a popular cruise stop with many of its British-influenced attractions located within a short shuttle or walk from the cruise docks. Even without the PVSA, cruise ships will make stops in British Columbia simply because of their desirability for guests. How many is the big question. The Greater Victoria Harbor Authority, which has been hit hard by the cruise shutdown, recently called on the federal government to rescind its order against cruise ships in Canadian waters. The threat of any temporary legislation becoming permanent exists and could decimate the $2.7 billion cruise industry in British Columbia, the organization said in a statement. With cruising now on a clear path to restart in the United States, Europe and beyond, Canada's blanket ban on ships carrying more than 100 people, regardless of passenger vaccination status, is increasingly an impediment to the industry's recovery. It's not just the West Coast being impacted by the cruise ban, although BC earns nearly 70% of cruise revenues in Canada. In recent years, the Canada-New England cruising uh, scene has seen a sharp growth, with ships bringing one3 3 million passengers annually to eastern Canadian ports, including Halifax and Montreal. The Canada-New England cruises weren't included in the legislation that gave Alaska an exemption from the PVSA, so unless the Canadian government rescinds its ban, a second consecutive year of cruise earnings will be washed away. Uh, I have a link to that article. Uh, in uh, cruiseradio.net in the show notes. And I'm so sorry about this bad news for my Canadian friends. Remember, uh, keep in mind, just two weeks to flatten the curve. You guys can do it, really. Uh, We've talked about baggers. You know, the the, the folks that bag your your groceries and your stuff. Uh, We've talked about them over the year and over the years. In Puerto Vallarta, much as well as in Mexico, senior citizens are the ones that are manning uh, the bagging stations at the markets. And we always encourage listeners to tip their baggers because it's the only way that they get paid for their day's labor. The markets do not pay these people to bag your your stuff. Uh, It's understood that people, the common shopper that comes to, to shop, they're the ones that, that tip and they pay for the service that these seniors provide. It's actually a really beautiful thing. And uh, But he, here's the thing. Walmart. Walmart is now in the news because, well, it's in the news for a bad way, not a good way. This report is from Mexico News Daily. Walmart's decision not to rehire seniors to bag groceries triggers a boycott. Uh, The announcement leaves 35,000 seniors out of work, it says here. This is uh, June 25th, 2021. For 35,000 seniors bagging groceries in Walmarts for tips, uh, it was a way to make a little money, but at the start of the pandemic, those workers were dismissed, and now Walmart has announced that seniors will not return to work. 
a move that has triggered a boycott among customers. With the viral hashtag, Yo no compro in Walmart, I don't buy from Walmart, social media users are calling on others to join the boycott, which also calls on participants to stop shopping at Walmart-owned Odega Herrera, Sam's Club, and Superama. Uh, the company announced last December that the baggers would not return Based on the fact that plastic bags are now banned around the country, uh, the idea that shoppers don't want the seniors touching their products for sanitary reasons, we have observed that our clients want to avoid that third parties have contact with the merchandise, the company said at the time. We've stopped providing single-use plastic bags to support the care of the environment, so our clients now bring their own bags and have gotten used to packing the merchandise. Social media users argued that the the job could still exist since shoppers bring their own cloth bags, and in some stores, paper bags are available. To protest the decision, dozens of affected seniors marched on the National Palace on Wednesday, demanding that President Lopez Obrador do something about the issue. It's unjust that they make us feel like a nuisance. This is the only place where they give us work, And we want them to see that we can still keep working, said Susanna, age 64. She had worked for three years as a grocery bagger and said her life savings were not enough to live on in retirement. I decided to become a bagger to support myself, but I realized it made me feel productive, she said. Lopez Obrador said Thursday that the federal government will call on Walmart to reconsider the decision. I will analyze it, and I'll call on them to to help, to contribute. Walmart is one of the commercial enterprises with the highest sales, so why not help, the president said in response. It's a matter of talking with them. Often issues can be resolved with dialogue, with communication. The president instructed Leticia Ramirez, the director of citizen services in the president's office, to reach out to Walmart executives to analyze the situation. And uh, I have a link to that article uh, from Mexico News Daily, which was lifted, of course, from a couple other, you know, periodicals in the show notes. Now, just imagine if uh, some of those seniors uh, had learned to speak English when they were younger. Perhaps they wouldn't need to be bagging groceries in their old age, right? So our... Guest that's coming up right now actually teaches people to speak English. Uh, his name is Eddie Rodriguez. And uh, the last time that I was in Puerto Vallarta, uh, JR told me that Eddie had called him up. He invited him to a soft grand opening over at uh, T- a Texas Original Wings y Mas, over where El Torito's used to be. We talked about that a couple of episodes back. Uh, and JR asked if I wanted to come along and, you know, he said free booze and food. And I said, where do I sign up? So, uh, when I got there, I was escorted upstairs to where the crowd was beginning to gather. And there were a lot of people I knew, which was really cool. I saw Lisa from Rise. We've spoken with Lisa, uh, Refugio Infantil Santa Esperanza. I remember that place. And, uh, Lisa was telling me about a fundraiser that they were getting ready to have with Eddie uh, from the American English Tree, which, you know, by the way, the fundraiser has come and gone. It was a great success. Thank you very much to to the folks over at uh, at the Texas Original uh, Wings and and Emas. And uh, you're going to be hearing from Lisa uh, in this particular interview. Uh, But, you know, I said, hey, Lisa, Can you introduce me to Eddie? Anyway, so uh, she did, and uh, he agreed to come and talk with me. Now, I I interrupted him in the middle of eating and drinking, okay? Uh, And I I just was there to ruin his day. I told him that, and uh, he said, no problem. I'll come and talk to you guys. And you're going to love Eddie. You're going to love his story. So let's go right now to the corner of Ignacio Vallarta and Venustiano Carranza. 243 at uh, at the new Texas original Wings y Mas. And let's meet a man with a grand corazón, with a big heart, uh, a grand plan that even you can partake in as well. We're going to 
lend an ear to the man with a plan. His name is Eddie Rodriguez of American English Tree in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. All right. Eddie, thanks for coming on the show today. Oh, muchas gracias. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from, and what was your path that led you to Puerto Vallarta? Well, here it is. I was born in Mexico City. Um, I was born in, well, uh, in, the, in, the, in the poor side of town. When I was nine years old, my parents decided to take me to the States. So we took that long journey, traveling across the desert, going to, to, through the border, getting to the States. And then I ended up, you know, luckily, we fortunate we got there. Um, then I went to school. I finished high school. And after finishing high school, I joined the U.S. Army. I was in the U.S. Army for 10 years. I did a one-year rotation in Bosnia. After doing my 10 years in the service, I got out. And after traveling all of Europe and, and meeting so many, pe- so many different people from many different places, I decided to come back home. I was actually going to go to Cancun when I told my mother, Mom, I'm, I think I want to go back to Mexico. I'm going to go to Cancun. And she says, why don't you go to Puerto Vallarta? You actually have distant relatives there. I said, okay, I will try Puerto Vallarta. I came to Puerto Vallarta, and just like that, the first day, I fell in love. It was just, I don't know, unbelievable. I, I fell in love with the people, the servers, the culture, everybody. So um, after being here for 10 days, I went back home. I sold my business. I sold my house. I sold my car. Uh, and then said, you know what? That is where I belong. I came back to Mexico, and I've been in Mexico for the last 10 years, in Puerto Vallarta. After being in Puerto Vallarta, I realized, you know what? There's a lot of things that I can do to help people here. I did a lot of um, public relations. I, I did a lot of volunteer work. And then one of the things that really caught my attention is people, kids, children in Mexico, they needed or they they. They needed the opportunity to learn English, for somebody to teach them English the correct way. I started going to different schools and um, asking how they teach or what was their method. And I realized that most of the schools that teach English here, they use their English or their method to just make money from locals. They, They don't really teach them. So when I started teaching at different schools... I actually got fired from one school Whoa. because they said, Eddie, you are teaching them too fast. You need to teach them slow because they are our students and our customers, and we need to keep them as long as we can, right? Ah. It's, a, it's a, competitive, a competitive job, so the longer they stay with us, the more I can pay you. I got really bothered by that. I told them I couldn't do that. I wanted to teach them English fast, so I was let go. I was fired. I went to another school that teaches English. I told them I want to be an English teacher. I want to teach my people. I want to give them a fighting chance. I want to teach kids. The same thing happened. They're like, okay, just take your time teaching them English. We don't need them to learn so quick or else we're going to lose them as students. That, that time, I didn't get fired. I quit. And that's when I decided to open up my own school. You know what? I'm going to open up my own school. I'm going to teach kids. I'm going to teach people that want to learn English. I'm going to teach them the best way so they can learn, so they can have a fighting chance of getting a job, of getting ahead here in Vallarta, because you, all, you guys all know that um, tourism is what we depend on. So after that, um, I opened up my own school and I started with four students. Four students at my house, around my dinner table, uh-huh. and four students soon became eight. Eight students became sixteens. Once I got to 22, 22 students, I opened up my own school. I opened up my own school, and I, and I decided to call it American English Tree. People ask me, why did you call it English Tree? I said, I told them, it's, just, it's me planting the seed and watching every student become a tree. You know, they grow, they become strong, and they get a fighting chance, a fighting chance to become someone or something in Vallarta. Once I did that, once I started teaching English, my roots were planted. I was, they were solidified. I am no longer leaving Vallarta. I consider myself a pata salada, even though I wasn't born here. I love Vallarta, and I love helping people. Right now, we are providing scholarships, becas, to a lot of kids, and we're providing becas to a lot of people that are um, 
that are trying to learn English so they could um, they could get a better job, they could get um, better wages, they could provide better for the family. So that's what brought me to PV, and that's what I'm doing now. It's fantastic. What a great story. Oh, my God. All right, so American English Tree. Is it strictly you're teaching Spanish? Are you teaching Eng- uh, uh, English and Spanish? What are you doing? All right, so this is how it started. We, we, I started, we started. We started teaching English at our school. And then soon I had one person um, ask me, do you teach Spanish? And I was like, you know what? I think I can. So I dove into Spanish, into the rules, the structure, the grammar. Holy crap. I didn't realize Spanish was so difficult to teach. <laughs> Man, it took me long hours. Midnight oil. I'm telling you, it was hard work. But I finally was able to put a book together. Then I was able to put the second book together. Now we have seven levels of Spanish. All the way from basic Spanish, past the subjunctive, if you guys know what I'm talking about. And it's working. So then I decided to put a program together. What I told people is, okay, for every person that signs up to study Spanish, your tuition will sponsor a kid to study English. And I'm going to match you guys together, match you up, and then you get to meet the kid you're sponsoring. You get to practice your Spanish with this kid, and this kid gets to, spra- to practice their English with you. Wow. And you know what is working. When I went, right before COVID hit, we had 68 Becca students, 68 kids that were being sponsored by 68 Spanish students. But once COVID hit, my school got shut down. I was no longer allowed to have students in the classrooms. So my only uh, way of surviving was teaching Spanish online. Right now, they finally gave me the green light to be able to have a couple of more students at our school. You know, in person, six students per class. But we're picking it back up, and I'm starting the project again. For every person that signs up to study Spanish with us, you will sponsor a kid to study English and you will get to meet this kid. You will get to talk to him. Once a month, we will, we, we will have what we call multicultural events where they're actually going to meet the kid they're sponsoring and practice with them. Um, next week, actually on the, 18, on the 18th of May, we just made, made an arrangement, uh, an agreement or a, uh, a project with RISE. I don't know if you guys heard of RISE. Sure, we've okay. been to RISE. Okay, RISE. The orphanage... Um, this is the place that's connected with us where we're actually going to offer free Spanish classes to the kids in the orphanage. Wow. And also, f- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, free English classes. Yes, yes. And also free English classes to their staff. So their staff is also going to be able to learn English so they could deal with, with, um, with volunteers and with America, with the foreigners. Oh, that's a great okay. idea. Yes. Yeah, that makes so a lot of sense. We're, we're working together. There's also another group called Abuelos of Vallarta, we're working with them as well, where we're going to provide the children that they have free English classes. Like I said, my goal is to give them a fighting chance. Vallarta depends mostly on tourism, and if you know English, you will have better wages and a better opportunity at life. So that's where we're heading to. That's Absolutely. our goal. Great. That's wonderful. Well, we, we also know the Abuelas. We've, we've been there as well. So that's fantastic what you're doing. Now, all right, without, like, you know, giving away any, like, uh, any, any secrets or anything like that, I mean, what is your method? How are you teaching these kids English? The way we're teaching English is like this. Um, what, I re- what, we, what we put together is a method where we teach you the very basic structure of the language. Most schools, and I, I'm not going to talk bad about the schools, but most schools, they, they want to take a long time to teach somebody English so they could be, keep receiving the payment. What we do is we teach them the very basic structure from the very beginning. Just like if you were a kid. You know, we're not going to teach you how to write Wednesday. We're going to teach you how to pronounce it first. And then you will write it, you know. We also want to teach them how to structure their own sentences instead of memorizing phrases. The same way we teach Spanish. We don't teach you how to memorize phrases. We teach you how to structure your own sentences. We have all the books. We have all the material. We we have all the material necessary for them to learn and it's working it's, it's been very effective where's your where's your class our classes are held in versailles 
and they are actually very um, the the visual on the walls and the classrooms and there everything's very effective. I would like for you guys to show up, maybe take a video of the classes, take a video of the classrooms, and you can see how well and how happy the students are. We actually have a lot of testimonials on um, on our classes, both in Spanish and English. So and people are actually very happy with our method. You know what? And I am full. I, we are well aware that not everybody learns with the same method. Some people learn being more uh, full immersion. Some people learn with repetition. Some people learn with hearing it every day. Some people learn with writing it every day. So what we do is we, tr we, we try to adapt to everybody's necessities, everybody's needs, right? But the thing is, uh, no matter who you are or what you're trying to learn, whether it's English or Spanish, is have the motivation to want to learn. And I'm gonna tell you something. Mexicans are very, very happy that you are actually trying to learn our language. And we are very supportive and we appreciate that very much. If you tell me, Eddie, I want to learn Spanish, the first thing I'm going to say to you is thank you. Thank you and I am ready to teach you and I'm ready to go at your pace. You're not going to go at my pace, I'm going to go at your pace. How do you feel comfortable? What makes you feel comfortable? And that's the way we're going to go about it. Excellent day. All right. Well, we're going to actually have these pictures of, uh, of, of, the, of your class and some of your happy people. You'll be able to find it, of course, on the blog post at www.portobarratotravelshow.com, and you'll find it on this particular episode. So there. Right. You can find us on um, AmericanEnglishTree.com or on, on Facebook, American English Tree PV. All right. You will go on there. You will see the pictures. You will see videos. You will see testimonials. You will see all the kids that we're helping. You will see all the volunteers that are part of the show. So, yeah, if you, if you guys just give it a click, give it a like, and if you're interested in learning, we'll be there for you. Excellent. Okay, so we will have that link in the show notes. You'll be able to find it. No worries at all. All right. Um, you know what? Eddie, let's go, let's go out, out, out of the English tree. Let's go out into town for a little okay. while, Okay. Um, tell us, a, we, this is the bonus round. This is, this is where the my, listeners, round, my listeners love this part of the, of the show. And it's because we talk about food and we all travel on our stomachs. And so I'm going to ask you what your favorite lunch, breakfast, and dinner places are here in Puerto Vallarta. Oh, man, that's a good one. There's so many good, delicious places. I'm talking, I mean, di different levels, different, different categories. You could talk. You could talk about a taco stand in the morning for um, for birria, or you can talk about uh, no, I don't know something like Freddy's Toucan or the new place that just opened up, uh, Wings and more. Uh, you also have um, a pancake house. You have uh, there's so many places to eat. Yeah. So many delicious places to eat. All right. So you don't have a favorite? Come on. Do you have a favorite? Uh, I do have a favorite. All right. I come do. on. Help me. I help me. What do you I like? Do. What's your favorite? Uh, I love. Langostinos, and I love Freddy's Toucan, and I love Wings and Mucho Mas. All right. I have those three places where you probably catch me eating breakfast. Oh, no, Andariegos as well. Oh, my God, Andariegos, uh, yeah. All well, right. Another one of my places. So tell, me, tell us about Andariegos. Well, Andariegos, it's, um, it's, it's more, more in town. It's near the Sheraton, about a block away from the Sheraton. Uh, the guy that owns it, Hector Cuevas, oh, my God, a great guy, great attorney. If you guys ever need any legal any legal assistance or legal advice, he's yeah, the baby. guy to go to. Oh, we all need legal advice. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go to jail in Mexico, buddy. Trust <laughs> no. me, yeah. We all, we all need legal <laughs> advice. But, yeah, Andariego is probably one of my best places for breakfast. Okay. Yeah. All right, how about lunch? You got, you got favorites for lunch? Lunch, I, I, love, I love Langostinos, the beach. I can never go wrong with the beach. I also like um, uh, Barracudas, Barracudas. Yeah, the Barracudas. And, um, oh, my God, here is Zoe Lewis. You guys know who Zoe Lewis is, oh. the international singer from Britain. Zoe Lewis, I didn't realize you guys were here. Can I say, can she yeah, say hi? Yeah, of course you can say hi. Zoe Lewis, we are running a live show, so tell us who you are, what you do, and why we should come visit you. Oh, well, it's lovely here. We are at the Wings, the opening of the Wings, and we just, now our bellies are full. And I'm Zoe. I play in, in Canto usually every winter. This winter I didn't play. Zoe Lewis didn't play. But I've got my shots. And um, actually, I came to Mexico for a different kind of shot, <laughs> <laughs> my tequila shot. But I got my jabs in the States. And, um, and here we are. And I think tourism is going to start going up again. And so I had a show in Encanto last week, and it was packed. 
and very safe too. And I have to say it's lovely here in Wings because it's very open and I feel safe here. So uh, I think there's hope on the horizon yeah, and, and tourists are going to start coming back because it's so beautiful. And so are all of you. Oh, you are too. My goodness, Zoe. Zoe, such a pleasure to see you, beautiful star. We will be there. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Guys, you guys have to see Zoe Lewis. Yeah. She's an excellent, awesome, talented performer. Well, I'll, I'll Muchas ha- gracias. Nos vemos. Adios. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so, so we're in lunch. We're in lunch. My, my favorite lunch, I will say Barracudas. I will go to Langostinos. Um, Oh, of course, wings. You cannot go wrong with wings. Uh, Texas original wings and mucho mas. They're they're, they're becoming the, the hot spot right now. Yeah. So that's actually that's where we're at right now. So yeah, great place. And um, well, when it comes to lunch, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm I'm more of a of a of a taco stand kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have and a favorite course, taco stand? Yes, there's one across from um, the Guadalupe Church. Not the big one. No, no. Santa Cruz. La Iglesia de la Santa Cruz is a Carlitas. And then they have Tacos de Cabeza. And then there's one by Guadalajara Pharmacy, which is Birria. There's, you know what? There's all the taco stands. You know what? Come and support the local families that are that have the little taco stands. They are great. They're making um, Vallarta a better place. Yeah, they are. They yeah, are. Definitely. All right. So... How about dinner? What kind of a favorite Ooh, dinner, dinner place you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we go. dinner now, baby. Dinner. I got to tell you something. I have never been. I have never been um, wrong. That Casa Isabel. Ah, uh, yeah. Casa Isabel, one of my favorite dinner places. Absolutely delicious. What a fantastic yeah. view! Beautiful view. You got a favorite dish there? Yeah, actually, all of them. I tried the <laughs> ribs; they were great. But my favorite favorite is the filet mignon. Yeah. I love the filet mignon at Casa Isabel, one of my favorites. Um, there's also other restaurants that are, I mean, there's so many, there's plenty of restaurants with really, really good food, delicious food. Um, my personal favorite, Casa Isabel, because of the view. And uh, people, people, I don't know, they seem so friendly there. The service is great. Not one complaint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. Excellent location. And we've been to Casa Isabel, and Isabel is Amazing, she is absolutely amazing. Oh, great hostess! Oh my god, I yeah. love her to death, Isabel. If you get a chance to hear this, you know what? We love you, we love your restaurant, we love your service, we love your view, we love your place. Overall, you are loved, absolutely, absolutely. Um, she's actually one of my favorite podcasts. She was a great, she was a great interview. I gotta well, say, she, oh, bet, my god. oh my god, oh my god. All right, um, if you you know, you were going to go and spoil yourself. Let's just say, you know, do something that you could hardly barely afford. Or if you if you wanted to spoil yourself, if somebody was going to price is no yeah, yeah price is no object. Okay. What would you do, Eddie? What would you do? Holy smokes! Are you kidding me? <laughs> if I'm going to put it on somebody else's credit card, <laughs> yeah, is that what you're asking? That's me? what I'm saying, baby. Okay, all right. Well, first of all, I need one of those full body massages. I have, I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't spoiled myself on that sense, but I would love to find out where can I go to get a full spoiled body massage where like you don't even want to get up. You, you fall asleep on the bed and they actually let you sleep there for an hour afterwards. If there's a place like that, please let me know. There you go. All yes. right. Yes, that would be great. That would be one of the first things I would do. The second one, um, if I want to spoil myself, I am... I have been told that there's a lot of really good stores or places where they pr- they, they make um, leather, like leather vests and leather shoes and leather sandals, all that. Yeah. I've always wanted to do that. Um, maybe maybe try to um, like for them to like uh, what do you what do you call them? The people that try the measure. Oh, to your to fit you to yeah. have it tailored. To- yeah, tailored. Yeah. A tailor that totally fits your needs. Yeah. And I would like to maybe one day be able to say, you know what, I'm going to go to a tailor and I want I want a, a suit made just for me. That is one of the things that maybe down the road I'll be able to do. Um, what else? Maybe um, go to a place, a VIP section, you sit there, 
and where you don't really have to ask for anything, it automatically clumps you. Uh-huh. <laughs> that would be something to be spoiled by. Yeah. That would Stuff be pretty like cool. That, yeah. that would be cool. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, well, about, maybe feel like a celebrity one day, you know? Yeah. yeah. How about a hole-in-the-wall place? You got any, any places that, you know, you would actually go, you, you, you would never expect that it would be this really great place. You walk in and you're just, you know, blown away. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. There's tons of them. There, there's tons of holes in the wall. I, for, uh, for the most part, I don't have a favorite one. I have many. Every time I see a hole in the wall, I go in there and, you know, it's usually a grandma and mom cooking and the food is just delicious. And uh, I would like maybe one day, you know what? Hey, foreigners, expats, let me give you a list. Try this five or six holes in the walls. You will not be disappointed. But you know what? If you guys are walking around and you see a hole in the wall, try it. Try it. If you see grandma and mom cooking, chances are food is going to be to die for. You know, they have this seasoning that you just don't get anywhere else. So, yeah, I don't have a specific one, but my recommendation is try them all. Try them all. That's right. Just go in. Just go, just go in the it. hole. Go in, that's right. Go in the hole. <laughs> if, you had, um, if you had a day off and uh, you were going to go somewhere and come back that same day, where would you go? So if I was to go on a day trip, all right. Um, well, I just Vallarta... Vallarta won't let me go. I'm telling you. <laughs> I have an anchor tied to my foot. <laughs> I have tried. No, I have been places. You know what? I've been to um, I've been to Nuevo Vallarta. I've been to Punta de Mita. I've been south to Maito. There's a new place that I went to three weeks ago. It's called Ajijic. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. It's next to Chapala, the biggest lake in Mexico. If you guys haven't been there, I want you to look it up online and check out some of the pictures, some of the videos, and some of the some of the stuff that is there. Ajijic is such a beautiful city. It's spelled A J I J I C. Ajijic. You guys gotta try it. It's a it's it's such a beautiful place. All right. So, um, you know, actually, Lisa. Lisa's here. She can talk about rice. Okay. Refugio Infantil Santa Esperanza. It's a beautiful project, what she's doing, what she's working on. And she's actually working together with American English Tree so we can provide English to all to their children as well as their staff. We're going to have a wonderful event here on May 18th here at Wings and Mucho Mas. If you guys are interested in coming or in supporting the cause, just know... We are doing everything that we can to give the children a fighting chance, to give everybody a fighting chance. And Lisa, Lisa here is going to be, give you a little more information about the project. Hi, Barry. It's hey, good to Lisa. see you again. Yeah. And I would love to tell you a little bit about the project with American English School or English Tree. We are, as he mentioned, uh, educating 12 of our children and 8 adults starting on May 19th, and we're going to raise some money to just pay for some of the materials and some of its hard costs. And as many of you know, because uh, Barry's been kind enough to inter- interview us before, RISE is a shelter for 30-plus children who have been in at-risk situations and brought to us by the government, uh, the deep entity of the government here in Mexico, much like Child Protective Services. And these children live in our home. We feed them, clothe them, bathe them, educate them. uh, And we are all a big family, and they're beautiful children. And as Eddie said, they deserve a fighting chance. And in Puerto Vallarta, learning English is a key piece of that solution. And so we, we go there. We support them in every way. And this is just a new avenue for us to take them to a new level. And we're really appreciative of everybody that's here to support us, Texas uh, Original Wings, the Moss, uh, American Tree, American English Tree, and Barry, who is always supporting all the wonderful community things here in Puerto Vallarta. Well, thanks for what you do, and thanks for what you're doing. I think it's fantastic teaching these kids English, and wow, it'll be kind of easier for you if you can, you know, <laughs> communicate a little better with them, right? I'm yeah. hoping that maybe 
my husband and I get a little more Spanish under our belt, and we'll we'll go to school at the American English Tree as well, because oh. he teaches both English and Spanish, and I know that there's been a lot of success. He has a unique methodology, and we're anxious to tack it on to our base lo- level of Spanish. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, thanks for coming on again. Thank you. All right. So let's see. We were we were here for the for the day trip. Um, what's your favorite uh, three day three day trip? Three day. Oh, I, I told you, Ahihik. I, I have been to Ahihik twice, um, and I spend the, the the weekend there every time. And oh my God, such beautiful people. Um, tons of expats. Uh, the view is beautiful. I stayed at a hotel um, that oversees the lake. Um, the events there, the rock and roll bands, everything was great. If you want to get away for for the weekend, you know, and you you want to go somewhere, try Ahihik. It's like four and, four and a half, maybe five hours away from here by car, but it's just so totally worth the drive. It is, especially if you're going to stay there two or three days. Excellent. All right. Well, that's a, those are great suggestions, and uh, I got to get my uh, rear end to Ahihik one of these days too. Well, you know what? Next time I go, I will send you a message. Okay, Come bro. All right. Yeah, let's All go. Right. Let's roll. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Um, if you had a word of advice for a first-time traveler to Puerto Vallarta, what would it be? Oh, my God. A first... A one word of advice for first-time travelers to Vallarta? Um, I don't want to... I don't want to promote Nike, but just do it. <laughs> no matter what it is, man. I mean... If you want to go out boating, you want to go out fishing, you want to go out skydiving, you want to go sit on the beach, everything. You want to go stroll the boardwalk, the malecon, you want to go bar hopping, um, you want to go karaoke, you want to go dancing. There's just so much fun here in Vallarta. There's so many things to do. And I know a lot of people, when, um, when they think about traveling to Mexico, sometimes they're a little bit afraid of saying, Mexico, you know. It's not right, it's not good, it's a little dangerous, it's a little scary. You know what? If you show up one day to Vallarta, just one day, you will realize, man, there's so much fun to be had here. It's amazing. And you're among friends. Oh, everybody is a friend. I, you know, I see people walking in. There's Helen walking in. You know, there's John, there's Tony. Over there, there's Arturo, there's... Okay, there's Lisa. I mean, there's so many people here, and everybody's friendly. Everybody will give you a high five and say, welcome to Vallarta. What do you want to know? What do you want to do? We will guide you in the right direction. Everybody takes care of everybody here. Vallarta is the place to be. Absolutely. You got any words of warning? Warning? Uh, Any words of warning? Okay. Let me think about that for a second. Uh, Yes. Always, always. Tip your tip your bartenders, <laughs> tip your staff, and address the cops as yes sir and no sir. <laughs> That's ex- uh, th- those are excellent excellent suggestions. Uh, gracias. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Um, all right, let's let's come back to American Learning Tree just for a couple minutes okay. here. Uh, let everybody know uh, again how to find you. You've got the website. You, you're you're on you're on the face bag. You got everything going on there. Yes, okay. guys. This this is the way to do it. If you guys are interested in learning Spanish, if you guys want to learn Spanish, all right, send us a message at AmericanEnglishTree at gmail.com, right? We will give you your first class for free so you can learn the method. We will show you the method. We will show you our structure, how we work. And if you like it, you can sign up. If you don't like it, you know what? It doesn't matter. You tried it. It's free. No charge at all. But just also, if you like it, keep in mind, if you sign up, you're also signing up a kid to study English. Your tuition pays for them. And you will get to meet this kid. You will get to meet this child. And I've also, I, I, I actually have had uh, students, Spanish students, that have sponsored adults, you know. If we can work it out, we can do it as long as we're making a difference, as long as we're changing lives. You know what? Let's work together. Tell me how we can work together. Tell me how I can make it better. Um, every advice, every opinion, I am very receptive to them. Excellent. All right. Well, Eddie Rodriguez, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I want to thank you 
for allowing me to introduce my listeners to you and American Learning Tree. I really appreciate that. Oh, no. Muchas gracias a ti. Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. You guys are the best. Oh, Love man. you guys. Muchas gracias. No, muchas gracias a ti. And I'm ready for your Spanish class. So sign up. Okay. Si dice que si. Yeah, muy bien. Gracias. All right. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, Zoe Lewis. And thank you, Lisa from Rise. You know, I just love it when I have an interview where the guest just takes over. He just took over. Did you did you notice that? He gave me a break. I didn't have to work at all. It was great. Uh, and it was great information. I have links uh, in the show notes, and you're going to need them because you're going to want to sponsor a child uh, to learn English. And if you are on the ground and you want to learn a little bit of Spanish, you want to take a class, you can do it online too. You can do it in person. You can do it online. He's got all kinds of ways that you can do it. You need to go over to his website and check it out. Uh, and you can also, if you're in town and you're living here, uh, you can take a class and meet the person that you sponsor, which is pretty beautiful uh, all together as well. You can go see all that stuff over at www.portofairtravelshow.com. Uh, go to my website. Uh, go to my Facebook page. Go to their website. Go to their Facebook page over at American English Tree, Puerto Vallarta, uh, PV, I should say. And it's right there. I've got links to all that stuff in my show notes. It shouldn't be hard for you to find any of that at all. Get over there. Check it out. What a great idea. You're giving the gift of you know, a second language to somebody is incredible. Well, all right. Well, that should do it uh, for this week. Please stay tuned for next week for more on the ground reports from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Who knows? Maybe we'll have another hurricane. Anyway, we're going to have travel tips. We're going to have great restaurant excursion ideas and more. But until then, remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your questions and your suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, well, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending us your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to vallartainfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour through him right from his website. Remember, this is a value for value proposition, my friends. His experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you would do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide. It costs no more than if you were going to use someone else. So do it, really. And when you do take one of these tours, email me about your experiences. Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about your tour. Again, contact me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending off a message. And don't forget, he's got his maps, his DIY tours, his revitalized happy hour board, and more. And I have links to all of these in my show notes, so check it out. And once again, if you if you like this podcast, take the time, share with a friend, subscribe wherever you happen to be listening to it. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Remember, I made it easy for you to do that as well with each episode I create. And if you haven't been to my website, shame on Get over there. You really need to have a look there. Uh, I have links to the places that we talk about. I have interesting pictures and more all right there in the blog posts and in the show notes for each episode of the show. So check them out for sure if you haven't already. All right? All right. Uh, thank you so much to Eddie Rodriguez from American English Tree. He makes it easy to speak like a local. At the same time, you are giving a local Mexican an opportunity to better themselves, to learn English. It's a win-win. It is so cool. All this information, again, in the show notes. Get involved in the life of a pot of salon. Really? Come on, Eddie. You are incredible, dude. Thank you so much for all you do. And thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Port of Iron Travel Show. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos.
al río Cuando todo está en calma Pronto cae la noche Me brillas Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta 